As a kid growing up in the 1950s, the two highlights of the year were definitely Bonfire Night and the Sydney Royal Easter Show. I saved up for both by doing odd jobs and retrieving the deposit on soft drink bottles. My money went on bags of fireworks for Cracker Night and at the Easter show, it went on sample bags, rides and some very weird sideshows. The first show was staged at Parramatta in 1823, a year after Sydney's landed gentleman had formed the Agricultural Society of New South Wales, Parramatta at the time being the centre of colonial agriculture. By 1870, the Agricultural Society was growing and so too was their annual exposition. It was a showcase of breeding stock, an opportunity to buy and sell and, most importantly, a marketplace for new inventions in agriculture. In 1869, the Society had called Tully Ho and relocated to a larger space at Prince Alfred Park, where they could bring the country to the city. They soon outgrew the park and commenced looking for a new home. By the 1880s, Australia was economically riding high, with record wool, beef and wheat exports, and a deal was struck for the society to take a £10 a year lease on 40 acres of rough, scrubby land at Moore Park. In 1882, the first show was staged at what became the Sydney Showground. The first shows proved very popular with the public who were keen to see the exhibits, especially the exotic animals which included llamas, camels, alpacas and ostriches. By the 1920s, shows weird and wonderful had been added to the agricultural attractions. This was the era of spiritualism, freaks and wonders. Sydney couldn't get enough freakishness and craziness and Sideshow Alley was born. Tent shows have a long history in Australia. Even before the 1850s gold rush, we were prepared to be taken in, offer up our pocket money and gawk at a headless lady or some improbable sight. Some of the early showmen certainly relied on suckers being born every minute. Come and see the biggest mug in Australia, shouted the showman. And when you entered his tent, you saw your own reflection in a mirror. Another tantalisingly yelled, Only sixpence to see the man eating fish! And on entering the tent, there was indeed a man eating fish and chips. It was the curious, exotic and freakish that most punters wanted to see. Here is Mexican Rose, the biggest, and according to the Spruker, the most beautiful woman ever exhibited. She was 343 kilos and had a sling and crane to move her in and out of the tent. On the other side of the alley was the mother and son billed as the world's fattest humans. Betty Broadbent, the tattooed lady, offered 460 designs head to feet. Her largest was on her back and it portrayed the Madonna and child. Tam Tam, the strangest man alive, causing amazement in scientific circles. Very intelligent and religious, his skin is slowly turning white and he is spotted like a leopard. One thousand pounds, if not alive and genuine. Jojo, the dog-faced man, stand back lady, he bites. There was a famous real dog too, Dan billed as the largest dog in the world, was a massive St. Bernard. The showy, Les Short, had bought for £400 in Switzerland. There was also Wee Walla, the world's smallest trotter, and Wee Willy, the world's smallest racehorse. Piccadilly Circus must have been quite a sight. Six little pigs that do everything except talk the most wonderful animal act in the world. These wee pigs did acrobatics, circus clown acts, and staged a pig fight in a tiny boxing ring. And here we have Princess Pontus, the gigantic Amazonian headhunter, 
standing eight foot two and weighing 305 kilos. This huge woman graphically describes the customs and rights of the almost extinct Amazon headhunters. Exceptionally tall people, or very short people, were an attraction with more than one being billed as the tallest person in the world. Lanky Bill from the Isle of Man was a towering eight foot nine inches and claimed to have sold his body after he died to the Surgeons Research Society of England for £1,000. Dennis O'Duffy was 8 foot 5 and a half and still growing at 26. The roar of screaming motorbikes was also a drawcard, especially the female riders Pat Gamble and Jean Duke, Hell's drivers on the Motordome's Wheel of Death. Without a doubt, one of the most enduring attractions was the pygmy Ubangi from Central Africa. Brought to Australia, aged 30, by veteran showman Dave Meekin in 1949, she toured all over Australia as the tree-dwelling woman and pygmy princess. Ubangi was 25 inches high, and according to the sideshow Spruker, you are looking at a very wealthy woman. Other exotics included young Jang, the wild boy from Borneo, Indian mystic Chandra Abdullah and his mysterious Indian rope trick. How did he do that? And Venetia, the snake charmer. Showies typically paid their performers 40% of the profits, which, in a good season, could be a considerable amount. <laughs> One of the saddest exhibitions was Chong Chang, the pinheaded Chinaman. Considered a curious freak, his head was the size of an orange. He suffered from the then unknown incurable condition of microcephaly and abnormally small brain development. In 1948, the RAS banned freak shows and performing animal acts. The travesty wild man was part of the new sideshow alley where deception was acceptable. Seated in a pit, he had long shaggy hair, a wild beard and large vicious tusks in his mouth. He don't like his meat cooked, ladies and gentlemen, yelled the showman. When the wild man attacked the raw meat thrown into the pit, he grunted in appreciation with blood dribbling down his chin. Bystanders were taken back one day when a friend passed by and the wild man gave him a wink. Anna John Budd was another curious show. Billed as Canada's living wonder, he was half man and half woman. From one side, a muscular, sinewy developed man, and yet the other side revealed the aspects of a naturally formed woman. Proving there's a sucker born every minute, one of Sideshow Alley's biggest success stories was Madame Zena's Circus of Performing Fleas. Madame is the only female flea trainer in the world and she has brought to Sydney over 200 clever fleas. To which Madame Zena would explain to the open mouth crowd, Sydney fleas are lazy. I buy them sometimes paying as much as two and six each. I get them from the King's Cross Picture Show and boarding houses. But they don't live long. They prefer to suck blood than jump through hoops, waltz and do my other tricks. The sound of the beating bass drum heralded the next session of Jimmy Sharman's boxing troupe. Established in 1911, it ran until 1971. The members of the troupe were experienced boxers, including the Aboriginal boxer, Dave Sands, who was described as one of the greatest boxers never to have won a world title. Although most of the audience believed the fights were staged, there was usually some mug in the audience who thought he'd have a go and claim the £10 prize. Sometimes they did. The merry-go-rounds, beating drums and hubbub of Sideshow Alley have now been replaced with the sound of amplified music high-pitched advertising and the bump and whirl of mechanical rides. The Royal Easter Show relocated to Homebush Olympic Park in 1997, taking with it 
decades of memories which are now rapidly slipping into time. Thank you. 